you know, whether you're painting on hardboard or canvas, you know, know whether you like a little bit of flex or not. For me, I like uh, hardboard for smaller pieces, a little bit of flex with the canvas. And then the texture, um, if you're painting uh, smoother paintings like I do, you might want a little bit less texture. Or if you're painting more uh, with more texture, um, you know, like palette knife, for example, or just real thick amounts of paint, you might want a little bit more tooth to the texture of your surface. Um, so I don't like it perfectly smooth, so what I did was I took this perfectly smooth uh, surface and just went over it with a, some gesso and a, and a roller to give it just this little bit of tooth. Oh. Um, so anyway, that being said, um, uh, basically all I'm going to use today is just a little bit of odorless paint thinner. Um, I do keep some linseed oil on hand in case I need things to be a little bit more liquid. I don't tend to use a lot right off the bat because if it gets too um, too muddy, it can, you know, be hard to control. Um, and then I'm going to keep the, the palette real basic today um, and just try to move, move pretty quickly. Um, I'll keep the composition real basic, but I'll kind of go through uh, just some quick basics on composition right off the bat. And uh, so what I'm going to be using is a is a wet on wet technique, uh, which is how I start all of my paintings, at least for the first few layers. Generally, I work in layers, so this won't be completely typical, um, but, uh, but you'll get the idea. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to shout them out at me. Um, Where do you get your ideas? My ideas? Um, a lot of it's, a lot of my stuff kind of comes from uh, environmental issues. I surf a lot and I'm, uh, like she said, I was in snowboarding for a long time. So uh, a lot of, a lot of it's uh, kind of climate, climate related and. Um, Were you a pro snow, um, snowboarder? I never made a lot of money at it. I did uh, get a few, a little bit of prize money here and there, but not nothing to like, you know, stop working over. But um, so, not fully. Uh, this is Princeton. It's a um, it's called a filbert. It's got kind of a rounded tip. So I always suggest kind of starting with a. You know, start with your bigger brushes, um, get the surface area covered, and then I'll kind of, uh, I like nice earthy tones. They don't, they don't tend to uh, show through that much in the end, kind of leave you. Um, and then just kind of start basically uh, rule of thirds, just kind of get it blocked out, especially on smaller compositions. Larger compositions, I'll go into, um, you know, different different rules. Um, you know, sometimes triangulating things more, doing the uh, the nautilus, uh, whatever. It's you know, I'm spacing on the words, but I know what you're talking. Yeah, <laughs> the nautilus shell thing. <laughs> Keep it simple right now. If you're not. For, thank you. Anyone, anyone? <laughs> Bueller? So yeah, so um, I'm just gonna do a, uh, I guess I'll just do a rabbit today and really overthink it today. So <laughs> uh, something I paint a lot of is like rabbits and jackalopes, so. Um, I noticed you had tractors in a couple of your paintings. Did you grow up on a farm? I grew up in Vermont in a very rural, rural area. Um, so, not specifically on a farm, but, but, um, near, farms. near a lot of farms. There were times people would, uh, leave their manure spreaders on while they were driving down the streets <laughs> where I lived. What do they grow in Vermont? 
Uh, a lot of corn and a lot of dairy farms. So just generally start off, you know, real, real rough. You don't want to start with any details right off the bat. Just kind of get your general, general shapes. You can go for a three-quarter view, slightly looking up. So this will be kind of, uh, you know, the angle of the angle of the head up. Um, Angle the face forward, underneath the chin there. Just going to do the face today. Keep it simple. The ears back off the page. Do uh, I always exaggerate the features a little? It's kind of my my style, I guess you'd say. So it's kind of. It's going to be roughly where the eyes are. The cheeks down here. We'll talk soon. We'll talk. I know. Brow line. Right in there. There must be a reason why you chose a bunny today. Uh, it's just something I've done a lot of, so I feel like it's, you know, we don't have a lot of time. Essentially doing a bunny. Uh huh. Um, generally, I take take a lot of time and and um, do a lot of layers on my paintings. So to uh, do something I've done a lot. It'll take me a little less. I see a little bunny that's doing a karate. It it's got kind of his little paw up in front of its face. Oh, I can see that too. Can you see that too? Yeah, it's like this. And that's not what he's doing. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want his portrait painted, so he's got his paw up. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. What's that? It's an underpainting. Yeah, I'm just mapping out where I want things to be in the painting right now. So then, so that's pretty good rough, rough idea of where I need things to be. And you can go in and kind of, you know, wipe off where the highlights will be. And where do you display your paintings? Um, all over, really. I got. Uh, I'm about to go to Miami for a big show in December for uh, for Art Week Miami. Um, that'll be a be a big one. I show at the museum in Oceanside quite a bit. Um, I got a, a few galleries in LA that I show with. Um, place in New York. Um, got one place in Australia I've shown with a few times. Um, it's a museum in Athens that I have a couple pieces in the permanent collection. Right, get rid of some of these. So now I've got everything kind of mapped out where I want it. Um, I kind of go in and start.
So we have to so I'm just getting some basic basic shading in here to help help me figure out where all the shapes go and Again, keeping it really, really basic still. You don't want to rush into, rush into anything. Do you usually sketch first? Yeah, and that's one thing I want to talk about because I'm not doing it today, <laughs> is um, the importance of having reference material and and um, you know, sketching and having your ideas laid out ahead of time. Um, I mean, everybody obviously, you're allowed to have different styles and ways of doing things, but for me and for the style of work I do, I generally will have a solid sketch ahead of time. I'll have, you know, pictures of bunnies, laid, you know, three or four pictures of bunnies, even though it might not be exactly what I'm drawing just so I can have, you know, the directions of the fur correct and, you know, a lot of the details correct even though it's not the photo that I'm painting. Um, I'm not obviously not doing that today, but so I'm doing it wrong, but it's important in general. Um, I've done enough bunnies now that I feel like I can cheat a little on them, so um, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> um, not necessarily a painting, but thumbnails are a great way to um, get an idea for, you know, composition and then also doing a couple of uh, light studies on thumbnails. A lot of people do compositional ones, but not a lot of people do light studies. Which are, mean you do like two or three with the lighting differences? Yeah, so once you get your composition set, also doing ones where you kind of lay out the composition you like, but then just, or tonal studies, I guess you call them, where you, you know, just get your lights and darks, and that way it kind of helps you map out. It's basically the phase that I'm doing right now where I'm kind of mapping out. Um, Funny, honey. Oh, my God. Mine. Wow, I have to leave it. Three. She might mug you out. Yeah. I'm just in there. Yeah, so right now I'm just using uh, burnt umber, um, raw umber, and ultramarine. Um, so I'm just kind of getting my darks and my, my uh, you know, basically doing like a tonal study right now, um, life, style, life size, kind of getting everything mapped out. Um, not getting into too much detail right now. Um, and that's another thing I see people often rushing into doing details before, because right now I can still wipe off this whole thing if I want to. And you know, if I step back and I'm like, oh, okay, no, that's wrong. I can you know, wipe it down or wipe off a little part of it and move it. And it's really not a big deal. Um, but if you, you know, if I go in and I paint the whole eye right now, and then I decide the eye's in the wrong place, 
all of a sudden I spent you know an hour painting the eye and then I have to move it because you know it's in the wrong place so by keeping it real simple you know for the first hour you'll see it it all pulls together really quick later on And the importance of using big brushes in the beginning is uh, it saves you a lot of time and energy. You know, people, I see some people painting and they just start off with these little brushes. Usually I'll start off with a brush three times the size even on a painting this big. I just didn't bring one today. I did bring this one, but this one's real soft, so it's not good for laying out. This one's more for smoothing. It's not good for laying out quantities of paint, so. What type of resin is the best for oil paint? Uh, it depends on, on um, what stage of the painting you're in. Um, it's, uh, I use all synthetics, really. Um, Yeah, usually I have a stick that I use. I just didn't bring it today. whether it's an angry or a friendly bunny. Uh, we'll, we'll see. 
pensive. We'll see what kind of questions you guys ask. <laughs> <laughs> What do you prefer, angry, happy? We'll see. We'll see. Whatever you want. It's pretty easy to surprised. Sad. You know, where you pull it down that way, and it's. But it's, you know, it's little things like that make, you know, all the difference in expression. Um, so it's. You're messing with your subject. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's what we're allowed to do. And same with like just little, you know, little lines at the edge of the, you know, at the edge of the mouth there, you know, you want to do a little line like that, it's going to be happy, you want to, you know, get rid of that, you going to make it, that, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just that simple, like, I mean, it's, you're just paying attention to, like, little, or, you know, just a little, little bit of the mouth being open versus closed, you know. I don't know. I'm just trying to show her, like, show some different, like, how you can kind of manipulate the facial expressions, like that easily. So now, so now you know you can just say, like, now it's almost a little more surprised with the mouth open, like. A little bit of this. But yeah, I mean, look, have them looking up, and then yeah, something's coming at them. <laughs> coming at them quick. Darker on the campus than they are. Yeah. 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 
No, not at all. Would you prefer to be quiet? No, discuss away and feel free to shout out any questions you have too. I am here for you. We're enjoying this. Absolutely. I am. This is just a big um, blending brush. That's a, called a blending brush. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks a lot different. Yeah. Regular it looks a lot different than the TV screen. Yeah, it's lighter on the same screen. It's dark. It's dark. I just went in and put kind of a lot of extra texture in there and then knocked it back a little bit. And then I'll go back in and kind of put the texture back in where it needs it. So now I have kind of my basic color scheme. Uh, from here, I can go in and put in you know, start putting in the details, but I'm happy with the composition, I'm happy with the light and dark, and I'm happy with the basic layout of the fur, so now I can start 
going in and detailing out some of the facial features and the eyes and and then uh, I can go back in and pick out the highlights and It's all right. We got a lot of painting left to do. Like they, like they, they were like, 
<laughs> Two of them looked like that. They were petrified. The other one was hanging on the patio door. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> that was the funniest thing ever. So this is, a, this is a lettering brush. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Why yeah. so that light spot? Yeah. What did you call that? A lettering? Right. Yeah. Oh. That's a lighter. So yeah, I always keep a couple, couple of these. Yeah, a couple, few different sizes. Probably won't use this one today, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's three levels. Mm -hmm. Watch that one. 
So, I give everybody a chance to come up and take a close look at it and ask me any questions if, if you want.